together were injured by an Islamic terrorist. Left hand! Keep your religion off our streets. Keep your religion off our streets. Hey, we're moving. Britain first. Have a minute silence but before we do I would invite any of you who would like to to join me in a prayer for those who were sadly killed in this terrible attack any of you who want to join me please bow your heads eternal rest grant unto them O Lord and let perpetual light shine upon them may they rest in peace Amen. 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 If you could keep your heads bowed, the minute silence will start now. So I want to introduce our first speaker today. You've all seen this woman. She's the bravest woman in Britain, without a shadow of a doubt. We refer to her as the British Marine Le Pen. She's been in more mosques than your average imam. She's confronted more terrorists than the SAS. Please give a big round of applause for Deputy Leader Jada Branson. Being British is quite simple. I don't care what colour, creed, religion, I don't care what your background, ethnicity, religion or otherwise. If you love this country and you love the people in it and you honour and respect it and you embrace our culture, our traditions, then you are British. Yeah. 
So for me, being British is as simple as that. Come here, love it, honour it, protect it, stand by it. This is our country that our people fought for. I don't care what colour you are, I don't care whether you read this book or that book. If you love this country just like I do, then you are British and be proud of that. We knew that this was coming. What a horrible thing to say. How do we look our kids in their faces and say, we know this isn't the last one. This isn't the last terror attack. We know that. God forbid our kids were on that bridge that day. Process it. We are here because people have been slaughtered in the name of an ideology that is completely intolerant. It is barbaric. Barbaric acts in the name of Islam and Allah. They are not mental health patients. They are extremely switched on. They have read a book that I've read. It's called the Quran. And it says that you and you and you and all of your children deserve to be slaughtered, throats cut, because you are not worthy to live among them. That's what it says. You think this is a coincidence? There are no coincidences. It is time we rose up against these monsters. Slowly but surely, our country is turning into something that generations before us wouldn't even recognize. Those people in my family who fought for this country, they would be turning in their graves. You imagine dropping them into the east end of London now, where they used to walk the streets, where there used to be a British community. It looks more like Islamabad these days. What is going on in our country? But we knew this was coming because we've seen it. You look across Europe, people are being slaughtered. You look across the world, homosexuals are being killed in Florida just because the Quran says it's completely intolerant of anything other than Islamic values. Sharia law says throw the homosexuals off the building. What are they doing? They're throwing them off buildings. The Quran says cut the heads off the disbelievers. Do you think it's any coincidence that ISIS are cutting people's heads off? Muhammad was a paedophile and Muslims are copying him and they are grooming our children because he did it and they're told it's okay. We fought these barbarians in the Crusades and if it takes a crusade to defeat them this time then let's bloody begin it. Come out on the street, show people where we are. We're the British, we don't sit indoors drinking bloody tea and forgetting that people are being killed. We get out there and we fight. Then do it with me. God bless you all. Mr. Paul Golding, party leader. Joining us from Wales. Oh, that was all right, that was all right. Northern Ireland. Here we go. Cyprus. Okay, we've got people joining us from Cyprus. Thank you for joining us. Big round of applause. And we've got a lot of international friends here. We've got friends from Poland. You can see them here. With the God bless you. Me and Jane are off to Poland soon. And we're looking forward to that. Yes, you're welcome. And fellow European Christians, we are brothers in arms. As we've always said, love Europe, hate the EU. Yeah. We're against the EU, not Europe. Europe is a Christian you know, continent. And we're all brothers, we all face the same problems with mass immigration, with militant Islam. We are brothers in arms. So all of the people joining us from overseas, let's have a big round of applause for our international guests. Yeah. Last week on that bridge, a radicalised Muslim extremist, radicalised in prison, converted to Islam in prison, mowed down multiple innocent tourists, civilians, and then stabbed the police officer to death. We've all had a one minute silence 
for the victims. And that's why we're here today, because this is nothing new to us. We know this is going to happen all the time. Well, it has, hasn't it? It has. Look at Berlin. Look at Munich. Look at Paris. Look at Nice. Look at Orlando, San Bernardino, the Canadian Parliament, Sydney. I could go on and on all day. Let me tell, let me ask you right now, is the world suffering a wave of Jewish terrorism? No. no. Is the world suffering a wave of Hindu terrorism? No. Well, let me ask you, if you've got, got your head in the sand, what is the problem? The problem is Islamic terrorism. Yeah. We've come here today to make that clear because we are the only movement without our head in the sand. UKIP won't come out and say the truth. They won't say that this is Islamic terrorism. They're trying to play the game. They're trying to fit in with the establishment. The only mass movement in this country that has millions of followers that is calling this by its rightful name is Britain First. And we will always say it unashamedly, no matter how many times that they arrest us, no matter how many times they throw us in prison, no matter how many times they put us on trial for Mickey Mouse charges, no matter how many times they drag us into the High Court, we will not be silenced. The media, the politicians, they're the ones to blame. Don't take your anger out on ordinary Muslims on the streets. Don't take your anger out on them. Take your anger out on the usually right left-wing politicians and journalists who have wrecked this country and have allowed Islam to obey their borders. This is nothing new. It's been going on since 9-11. It's getting worse and worse and worse. And it's not going to get better. The frequency of these attacks is going to increase. The carnage is going to increase. I have been all over this country, in every town and every city. And I can tell you now that at least 80% of our towns and cities have already fallen by the majority to Islamic colonisation. I've been to Bradford, I've been to Luton, I've been to Brick Lane. You've seen it all. You've seen us being surrounded by mobs of Muslim extremists all, o all over the East End, in Luton, in Birmingham, in Derby, everywhere I go. Everywhere I go, and it's getting worse and worse. And it's not their fault, it's not anyone's fault, but these white left-wing journalists and politicians, they're the ones to blame. They target and persecute people like me, people like her, who are brave enough to put their heads above the parapet and signal the alarm to our people. They persecute us. Now you all remember the video of when I went to Luton? Yeah? A Muslim extremist followed us for about two miles just when we was outside of Berry Park. We pulled over and this Muslim extremist walked up to my window and punched me in the face. No further action. We caught a man on video punching someone in the face and there was no further action. Now, when I found out that an imam at an extremist mosque in Cardiff, a mosque, I might add, that are pumping out, pumping out ISIS recruits by the dozen, I went to this mosque to confront the imam who was caught on camera telling his worshippers, his flock, that it's okay for Muslims to keep sex slaves. Just for going to that mosque, I was flung in prison for a month. What is going on with this country? Muslims can punch people in the face and get away with it, but if you dare to go to confront an extremist imam, they will throw you in Pentonville for four weeks. That's the kind of country we're living in. If that's the way they want to treat us, then bring it on! Because I can tell you now, no amount of persecution, no amount of jail time, dragging us into the high court, putting soppy bow conditions on us, Nothing is going to stop or hinder or slacken our resolve to fight for Queen of Country and future generations of our people. This is not a problem with Hindus or Sikhs or Jewish communities. This is a problem, and it may not be the majority of them, 
we can at least agree on that. But there is a significant minority in this country of Muslims who are radicalised and are growing in number and want to see harm befall on us and our children. And we will always call a spade a spade when we see one. The torch of Britain has been passed on to our generation and we will make our ancestors proud. We will fight for Britain to our dying breath.